Hey boys and girls, it's Miss Stacy. I hope you guys are having a great day and enjoying the beautiful sunshine today. Um, you know by this point how much I love stories, right? Well, I wanted to come and read another one of my favorites to you. Uh, this one tonight is called The One O'Clock Miracle, and it is about the true story of Jesus healing the uh, royal official's son. And you can read the actual story, the true story in the Bible, and it is in John chapter 4. But this is a fun, uh, a fun story with pictures. We love pictures. And this is a really fun story of, uh, of kind of a dramatized uh, version of that story. And if you want to get your moms and dads or grandmas and grandpas to read the story to you out of John chapter 4, that is in verses 46, 49 through 54, I think. Let me check. 46 through 54. So if you want to hear that story, you can kind of compare um, and you can imagine these pictures in your mind. So um, Jesus, uh, John was one of Jesus's friends and uh, one of his followers or his disciples as we call them, right? And John wrote about this story because at the end of that, um, at the end of the book of John, he tells us that the stories of the miracles that he tells us about that Jesus performed, that they're like signs pointing us to Jesus, uh, like a signpost. So if you're ever going to, uh, you know, say you're going to go downtown to the zoo or to the aquarium, uh, you might see signs on on the interstate leading you to the zoo that'll say, you know, the zoo is, you know, 15 miles or, you know, the zoo is this exit um, or this way. And so Jesus's miracles, I like how John said that in the Bible, that, um, that the miracles that Jesus performed are like signs pointing us to him because nobody else could do miracles like Jesus did. So, um, so the one o'clock miracle is the one that we're going to read today, and that is by um, Allison Mitchell. And this is actually, um, you can find this on Amazon, uh, parents, but um, you can actually, this is the same, the good book um, is the same group of publishing group that did the story the garden the curtain and the cross that we read for Easter so um I love everything that they put out is just terrific but um so let's get started with our story tonight the one o'clock miracle long ago there lived an important man who worked for the king he was a sad and so so worried you see how worried he looks right there his son was very ill, so ill that he was going to die and no one could help him. So you see his dad taking care of him. And if he was an important man that worked for the king, I imagine that they had all the money, but no money could fix his little boy. He heard that a man named Jesus was doing the most amazing, wonderful things. So the man decided to ask Jesus for help because he heard that this man Jesus was doing things that only God could do. The man and his son lived in Capernaum by the sea. You see here the Sea of Galilee that's over in Israel is what we call it today. But Jesus was staying in Cana more than 20 miles away and they didn't have cars so that was a long way. It was a very long walk and uphill all the way. But the man had decided that he must see Jesus. So he said goodbye to his son and his family and he set off to see Jesus. I'll show you the picture up close there. Up the hill he walked and sometimes ran because he wanted so badly to see Jesus. This is one of those sideways pictures. The sun went down, the night was dark, and the stars were bright, but the man didn't stop. So you see how high that hill was? He had to go all the way up those hills. Huffing and puffing, he walked and walked and sometimes ran, hoping to see Jesus. The sun came up, the morning arrived, but there was still a long, long way to go. Puffing and panting, the man walked and walked and sometimes ran because he needed to see Jesus. 
At last, at one o'clock in the afternoon, the man reached Cana, the town where Jesus was. See, the sign says, Welcome to Cana. He had walked and walked and sometimes ran, and now at last he could see Jesus. Please, sir, he said, my son is dying. Please come with me. Please make him better. The man knew that if Jesus just came with him and touched his son, that the boy would be well again. But Jesus said, go. Jesus said, go. What do you think is going to happen? What? Go home without Jesus? After all that walking and running to get Jesus to come? But Jesus hadn't finished. Go, Jesus said, your son will live. That's an important rest of that sentence, huh? Go, Jesus said, and your son will live. The man believed him. Jesus wasn't going to come to the man's home. He wasn't going to touch the boy to make him well. But the man still trusted that what Jesus said was true. Down the hill, he walked and walked and sometimes ran because he believed Jesus. When we believe what God says, that's called faith. Have you ever heard that word before? And down here it says, your son will live because as hard as he was walking and running up hills, you know how tiring that gets. He kept just thinking in his mind, your son will live. So he knew he had to get back home to check on his boy. The night was dark and the moon shone brightly the man felt so, so tired. But on and on he walked and walked and sometimes ran because he trusted Jesus. The sun came up. A new morning arrived and he still walked and walked. Oh, you see his back cracking. He's cracking his back because he's so tired. Though his back ached and his legs were very sore. On he walked and walked and sometimes ran because he was sure that Jesus would make his son well. So see, now he's getting to go back downhill some of the way, huh? Then, far away in the distance, he saw some men. They came closer and closer. They were his own servants. They must have news, he thought. But what could the news be? Sir, they said, it's your son. Do you think it'll be good news or bad news? He's alive. He is well again. The man was bursting for joy. When, the man said, when did he get better? Yesterday at one o'clock in the afternoon. That's what his servant said. Do you remember what happened at one o'clock yesterday afternoon? One o'clock, one o'clock, the men replied. Then the man remembered. It was one o'clock when the man saw Jesus. It was one o'clock when Jesus said that his son would live. And it was one o'clock when his son got better. That was very good news they were coming with, wasn't it? Jesus didn't need to go and see the boy. He didn't need to walk and walk. He didn't have to run. Jesus simply spoke. And just like that, the boy was better. Wow, only Jesus could do that. And do you know why? Because Jesus is God's son. Happy and smiling, the man walked home and sometimes he ran to see his son again. Then he told his son and his family about Jesus and how Jesus could do things that only God could do. And they all believed in Jesus, God's son, too. See him cheering, your son will live. And now that the man's son was well, what could he do? He could smile and he could laugh. He could walk and he could run all because of Jesus. 
I hope you enjoyed that story, boys and girls. Listen, I would love for you to put down in the comments um, about something that you have prayed for in the past that God answered your prayer. Something that you may have prayed because you had a sick pet or you had something uh, wrong or maybe you were sick. I would love to know about a time that you prayed to God and that you believed and had faith like the man did and that God answered your prayer. So, if you can get your parents to help you put that down in the comments, I would love to hear about it. All right, boys and girls, well, I love each one of you. Keep on missing you. I hope y'all are being good boys and girls with your schoolwork, and summer's not far away, and hopefully we'll all be able to play outside once summer, run, once summer comes around. We can hopefully all play outside to, and be together again, which will be amazing. But uh, I love you, boys and girls. I'm praying for you, and I want to wrap up today, or tonight, rather, uh, in prayer, okay? So y'all bow your heads with me at home, and let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for the miracles that you performed to uh, give us signposts to you so that we have um, these incredible stories that we can read about thousands of years later that were true so that we know how powerful you are and how much you love us. Lord, I thank you for each of these boys and girls watching this evening. I pray that you would just continue to bless them and protect them, um, especially while we're apart, that you would protect them from any sickness and their families. And I I pray that you would just bless them, help them to be patient uh, and do their schoolwork with excellence and diligence and uh, to help them to be good boys and girls for their parents and to get along with their brothers and sisters. And I thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings on us. Thank you for how much you love us and all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls, well, thank you for watching, and I will hope to see you back here again very soon with some more stories. You know I'm going to have more stories for you, right? So I love you guys, and I will see you soon. Bye.